Hey, I'm Joel. First of all, I want to thank you for being here. I know the only reason you're here is because you want to make a difference in the upcoming election, and I'm going to help you do that. And of course, there's an app for that. So we're going to show you how to make the best use of your time out in the field with PDI Mobile. First thing you want to do is download the app before you go out to Canvas. Go to your app store to locate PDI Mobile Connect. You won't be able to use the app or practice at home. When you meet up with your canvassing coordinator, they're gonna give you a password. Once you have it, open up the app and check out the login screen. Enter the email address and password given to you by your canvassing coordinator. Don't expect those arrows to show up. Once you log into the app, you'll be greeted with the My Assignments page. It displays a list of canvassing assignments that are currently loaded on your device. To make sure your list is up to date, pull down the screen and it'll refresh. Clicking the Get Directions button will pull up a map with directions to your first canvassing assignment. Go to your first assignment. When you arrive, click on the arrow at the top to see a list of streets you've been assigned. Street View displays a list of all the streets in your canvassing assignment in alphabetical order. Tapping on a street will display a list of people who live at each address on that street within your assignment. If an address is marked yellow, it means someone is knocked during the current canvas, but not all the registered voters listed there were home. Ask the canvassing coordinator what to do about yellow houses. If a house is marked with a green bar, it means no one there has been canvassed. A house that's marked red means everyone in that household has been canvassed. Tapping on any of those records brings up a page with more information about that particular household. This is where you'll enter additional details about the voters and their responses. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Hit the arrow at the top to return to Street View. Now I'll show you a few more features. Tapping on the Map View tab will display all your voters on a map. Tapping on any of the icons will display an address. Tapping on the address pop-up will bring you to the household page. Use the arrow to return to the Map View. Now select the People View tab. This view displays a list of all voters in your assignment in alphabetical order by last name. Tapping on one of the records here will bring you to that person's page. Tap the Go Back arrow at the top of the page. Then, tap on the three-button icon to bring up a menu with some additional choices, such as the Addresses section, which allows you to filter your list by address number and gives you other options. Check with your canvassing coordinator to see if you need to access this and other choices. When you're finished with the menu, click on the Close button and return to the previous People view. On this page, you can choose Street View, Map View, or People View. When choosing Street View and tapping on a street, you'll see a list of voters on that street. Tap on an address to see the voters who live there. You'll also see the voters' age and gender listed. And if they're a permanent absentee voter, you'll see PAV. If a voter doesn't have a PAV by their name, encourage them to vote by mail. Hit the return arrow to go back to the street view. Like the houses that we saw were marked green, yellow, and red, each voter is color-coded in the same way. Your canvassing coordinator will tell you if you should contact any people or houses that aren't marked green. Tapping on one of your green addresses will bring up buttons that offer a series of choices. If you're not able to talk to someone at a house on your list, tap the Disposition button. It'll bring up a number of choices for you to describe the reason, such as not home, gated, or refused. If someone is too busy and says something like, you know, now's not a good time, they should be marked not at home. But let's just say a voter is hostile or rude or says never come back, then those people should be marked as refused. If the reason isn't covered, you can go back to the individual's page and tap on the plus info button. You can add contact information as well as any comments, including why you weren't able to make contact. The next step is filling out a survey. Now, go back to the individual's page, click the survey button next to the plus info button. Choose the appropriate response. The categories might vary, but should be something like strong support, lean support, undecided, etc. Then press next and proceed until you've completed the survey. When you're done, a screen will come up with all the voters' responses. And remember, check for accuracy, then hit the Save button. You may see other options on the page, so ask your canvassing coordinator if you should complete those. Now, to clarify, the app does work if you're not connected to the internet, but make sure everything is synced the next time you're able to connect. 
Now you may have to manually sync the next time you're able to connect, but do not log out before you sync. If you do, you will lose all the work you've done. To manually sync, go to My Assignments page, click on the three-dot bar to bring up the menu. Click on Sync Lists. Now that you've seen how the PDI mobile app works, take some time to get familiar with it. And remember, you're gonna spend most of the time on your device before you walk up to the door and after you walk away. What you don't wanna do is use the app while you're having a conversation with somebody. What you wanna do is be engaged with the person that you're talking to. Thank you for your time, enthusiasm, and effort to make a difference. Sometimes elections are won by just a few votes. Who knows? Maybe the people you talk to will be the ones to put your candidate in the winner's circle. Now, this app is an important tool, but no app can replace you.